Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel, where you get daily and consistent hot topics in music, entertainment, reality TV, and more. And additionally, you get some reality TV recaps. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out when we go live, when we have breaking news, or when we upload. In today's video, I wanted to give you a quick recap on the latest episode of Married to Medicine. I know we usually go live, but I thought this might be a more quicker and efficient way to do it and hear your comments in the comment section. I will be definitely replying. Let's jump into this latest episode of Married to Medicine. Well, it's been a really great season so far. I know a lot of people are saying it's slow to start, but based on what I see coming up, especially with the return of Quad, it seems as if Married to Medicine is going to be even better. And one of the things, and I've said this multiple times, I love seeing Black doctors on television. I love these personalities. And just like in Jersey, I love the husbands on this show. But in these latest last few episodes, they were in Washington for the March on Washington. And seeing their role in that has been so inspiring. And I know it's going to inspire other future doctors and also for people to take their health more seriously. And shout out to all of the medical professionals that have been taking care of so many people for years, even before the pandemic, but definitely during the pandemic. In this latest episode, we're still in Washington, D.C. We're at the dinner with Giselle and Robin. So at this dinner, it comes up, Dr. Contessa refers to Giselle's husband as her husband. We, as we know, they divorced many years ago, but they've been rekindling, allegedly, their relationship. So they talk about that a little bit. But even when Giselle brings it up, or when Giselle pivots it to Robin and, and Juan getting back together, both of them, when they talk about these potential relationships, I'm so not convinced. I am so not convinced. I want to see how this all will play out next season because as we already know, Giselle is coming back. Robin is also coming back. And I've said it before, rumors are saying that Robin will either have to get married or have a baby to keep her position on Potomac. But that's a whole other video. Let's con continue on Married to Medicine. So at the dinner, I have to say, I like Carrie. I remember Carrie from the very first season, but I completely forgot how, what a spitfire Carrie is. And she is proving it in this latest season to the point where I'm like, Lisa Nicole, are you there? Are you there? We got to hear a little bit from her in this episode, but that was it. We got nothing else from Lisa Nicole. Where are you, girl? Look, I don't recall the seasons with Lisa Nicole. I'm not, at this point, I'm not impressed. I don't want her back. But Carrie... Carrie needs to be full-time. And she's still married to her husband. We also found that at least Nicole is still married to her husband, despite the rumors and everything else. But anyways, they have this, this conversation at the table. And it gets a little ugly in the very beginning. As soon as they sit down, I'm not liking how Toya is talking to Anila. Toya does seem like that friend and that personality that is just so controlling and so you have to listen to what I say kind of thing. And look, and don't get me wrong, I I like Toy on the show. I also like Dr. Heavenly on the show. If we didn't have these two characters that aren't friends on the show, the show would, would be lacking. The show would be lacking. But I don't like how she's been talking to Anila. But then the conversation between Anila and Dr. Dr. Heavenly, that turned real quick. She called Anila a Muppet. And then she called her Miss Piggy. She called Dr. Heavenly Miss Piggy. I was like... But that shut up Dr. Heavenly real quick. It really did. Let's segue to the husbands. The husbands are having their own little get together. You know, I love these little scenes with the husbands. And Pastor Jamal Bryant, I was going to call him something else. Shout out to Monique. <laughs> but I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. He just gives me creepy vibes. Anytime. I don't care what scene. He's in with a group of group of guys. And you think I'd be like, I, I kind of like Pastor Bryant. He gives me creepy vibes. That's all I'm going to say. But one of the other common themes that we saw throughout this episode is Dr. Contessa and her marital problems. In, in that conversation that she's pretty much saying, alluding, it makes everyone at the table think, are you saying that Dr. Scott is cheating? And she's just saying that he might be going through a midlife crisis. I'm not sure if I would be saying that about my husband 
in a group. I don't care how close these people are to me. I'm not going to talk about my husband's alleged midlife crisis. But for once, her and Toya connect on something. But then Toya is revealing too much about Dr. Eugene and his low testosterone. I know we're sharing it on the show or, right, you know, we already saw that scene, but to share amongst these ladies and, and use that as a connection, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Contessa was like, I don't think you should be releasing his medical diagnosis to everyone. That was kind of awkward, but that is Toya. That is Toya. But speaking of Toya, Toya and Anil's relationship, we've heard rumors that their friendship is not what it was, as we saw in the beginning of the season. And you can see why, because as I said before, Toya is a very strong personality and almost controlling in regards to her friendships. And I've seen friendships like this before. Couldn't work with me. Couldn't work with me. I'm a, I'm a bull. <laughs> so that's not going to work with a Leo moon. Watch out. But no. You can see how Anila is trying to forge friendships with the group and how that's going to interfere with her friendship with Toya. But I think Toya is making it very easy for Anila to become friends with the other ladies because she's not treating Toya like a friend. She's almost treating Toya like a little sister or a lap dog. Just saying. But the conversation about the makeup artist and hairstylist and her not paying them comes up again. She, they have a conversation about her, about Anila's money management. And it, it's so ironic for them to have the conversation because you know the rumors have always been about Toya not being able to afford things, being broke. You know, Quad just, you know, a couple of episodes ago said, said that she broke, borrow and stole for her home. So it was very ironic to see her giving Anila money advice and anila i mean she seems like she likes to spend where she uses her nanny as the person to take her pictures you know anila's a blogger and look y'all gonna stop sleeping on bloggers some of these bloggers are, are out here out moneying all of you so slow your roll look you should see the, some of these people's checks look we should start reporting on bloggers and and their lives um we might but yeah, I just, it was just an awkward conversation. But I, at the same time, I, I like Anila as a new addition. Do I like her? Could she be my friend? I don't know about that. But I like her as a new addition because I feel like there's levels to what's going on with Anila. And I love her husband, her husband to me. I love his energy. And I think he mixes well with the other men. But here's the thing. I don't like this connotation that Anila is not paying for services or bills because she you know they were talking about well you you tip well well she said i hope you're gonna you know really tip these people because you haven't paid them yet and i'm just like anila why haven't you paid these people i don't think she's hurting for money she is over budget on her new home they're building a new home they're over budget look we're finding out some of these housewives even if you're a doctor it doesn't mean you're necessarily i mean you probably make a lot of money but are you spending more than you actually have I guess we will see, you know, all this stuff, you know, it just came out about Jennifer Aiden. I have to do a separate video on that, that she does have a mortgage and they owe over a million dollars on that home. Stop fronting for these cameras, y'all. But the other really beautiful moment in this particular Married to Medicine episode has to be with Dr. Heavenly and her family. She, Dr. Heavenly, I know a lot of you don't love Dr. Heavenly. I actually, I'm endeared to her. There's just something about Dr. Heavenly that I enjoy. She just has this really, bubbly personality. I mean, she can be harsh at times. Don't get me wrong. She can be harsh at times, but I can also appreciate what she brings to the show. She brings a lot of humor. She brings the conflict that, that you all love, but seeing her interact with her family, the food looked good, even though she didn't make it, but seeing her beautiful children and they, they do seem well-rounded and that could because of, because of Dr. Heavenly, but also because of uh, Dr. Damon, uh, Damon, da da Daddy Damon, or Damon Daddy. That's what Carrie called him. And I like the conversation that they're having. And we're seeing this conversation continuously with, amongst the group about experience, experiences of being Black, experiences of police brutality. And it's unfortunate that so many of us, including myself, have have these stories of racism, stories of police brutality, stories of injustice that we still recall, recall to and still are triggered by. And he shares his own story. And I just love hearing their kids interact and react to their stories. And I think it's important, especially as Black people, to teach your children these things and give them a different perspective. Because I think the perspective growing up for many of us in, in 
our ancestors was how to survive in this world without stirring up trouble. I think now the direction from parents would be very different, saying that, no, you should push back. No, you should protest. No, you should vote. No, you should excel in every other way that you can. There are no limits to that. So I, I, I like seeing that conversation. And then we get to Dr. Jackie's new home. I loved it. I think her renovation looked great. I don't know what's going on with her and her, her husband. I know there have been ups and downs. I don't feel the magic there. But at the same time, I also feel that Dr. Jackie, although I like her, and I know some of you are on the fence because of everything that happened with Buffy, but I like Dr. Jackie, but I do see why people don't like to, like like Dr. Jackie. I think there's this this perception of perfection that she loves to give off isn't necessarily there. And I would love to see her li not just literally let her hair down, but let her guard down and not just open us up to this beautiful, perfect home. But I think there is definitely more, more that we could see from her in regards to vulnerability. But I, I, I thought the home was beautiful. And we got to see Quad. Quad came why, why did Dr. Simone love the Ciroc so much? Damn, is Ciroc that good? I don't drink, but for her to be so, oh my gosh, you know, they've had a tumultuous relationship. But Quad is great for this show. I know she's not married to medicine anymore, but she's so funny. And I the interaction between her and Dr. Heavily in the beginning got rough, but it was nice to see them make amends. And also it was nice to see that interaction. The last time we saw that interaction on the show between them, it was like the best scene. So we need we need peace in that relationship. And what's up with Dr. Jackie Holston's skills? I mean, Quad did have a point. If you're gonna host this big elaborate situation, why couldn't you host, you know, not everybody likes chicken. I mean, I do, just saying. I'm excited for the rest of the season because from what I heard uh, Dr. Heavenly confirmed on her YouTube channel that we're going to see Quad for the rest of the season. So that should be interesting. And I want to see more Carrie. Lisa Nicole. Anyways, as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section or the live chat because I'll be posting this for a live premiere. Let me know what you think of this latest episode. What was your favorite point parts and what were your least favorite parts? Is it a good season? As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out when we have breaking news, when we go live, or when we upload.